is risen today. Number 602, Christ the Lord is risen today, verse 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters. Today, we invite the Lord as the bread of life, who nourishes us, our body and soul, with his most divine presence. To be worthy to receive the Lord in these sacred mysteries, let's pause for a moment in silence, acknowledging our unworthiness and seeking God's forgiveness. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when, by your gift, we have known it more fully, so that those we have freed from the darkness of error may cling more fully, more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, 
go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Messiah, Isaiah the prophet, and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this script, scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Athos and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, today's gospel is the continuation of Jesus' teaching on the bread of life. Jesus declares that he has seen God his Father because he has come from heaven. And Jesus also states that we know Father because we can hear Father's voice through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And the Father draws us to him through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And that is the closeness that we have as God's children. Here Jesus reveals himself as the bread that is essential and that is necessary for everyday life. And how do we understand these words of Jesus the bread of life. I share with you some wisdom from the Vatican II document, Dei Vobum, number five. It's written there, before this faith can be exercised, we must have the grace of God to move and assist us. We must have the interior help of the Holy Spirit who opens the eyes of the mind and makes it easy for all to accept and believe the truth, Jesus, the bread of life. Having said that, I'd like to bring more wisdom and understanding from a reflection from Pope Francis. Jesus, the bread of life, nourishes the soul. He alone forgives us he alone makes us feel loved, even if everyone else disappoints us. He alone gives us the strength to love, and he alone gives us the strength to forgive in difficulties. He alone gives us the peace to the heart that it is searching for. Jesus, the bread of life, alone gives eternal life when life here on earth ends. He is the essential bread of life. These words of the Lord reawaken in us our deeper love for the gift of the Eucharist. No one in this world, as much they might love another person, can make themselves become food for them. God did so and does so for us because he loves us infinitely. And every time that we come around this altar and celebrate the Holy Eucharist, break the bread, share the cup, receiving the Holy Communion, 
the most holy body and blood of Christ nourishes our souls. Let us receive the glorified body and blood of the risen Lord in this holy Eucharist with a repentant heart and much more with grateful joy. May the joy of the gospel strengthen us. May Jesus, the bread of life, be close to us. May we continue, continually grow in the grace of God and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God bless us. Amen. Please stand for the prayers of intercession. With confidence in the love of God, let us bring our needs before the Lord. For all priests, may the Lord give them the strength and wisdom for their sacramental ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may the Holy Spirit empower them in working for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who struggle with chronic illness, may God bring them consolation, peace, and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, may we be given the grace to witness to Christ's presence in the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the Eucharistic revival in our diocese and all those who are preparing and all those who are going to be present. May we be moved by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have passed away, especially Dorothy L. Taylor, for whom this Mass is offered, may they come to join the company of all the angels and saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, hear these prayers we offer you today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. 
O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by our worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, who overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that we have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Dorothy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. James and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be caused to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus, the bread of life. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but we say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please stand for the closing prayer. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those we have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for praying with me in this Holy Mass. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Our holy hymn is number 914, Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Number 914, Alleluia, sing to Jesus, verse 2.